Stephanie, what were the main trends in retail real estate in 2020? Well, first of all, it may surprise you, but investment in retail property fell by only 18% in Europe last year, compared to 26% for all properties. Actually, volumes were mainly driven by large transactions and deals that had been initiated back in 2019. Uh, we had, for instance, uh, the sale of Unibail Rodamco's portfolio, Crossroad, in France. Secondly, capital values of European shopping centres continued to decline last year by 25%, implying a 35% since 2018, due, of course, to concerns about the ongoing growth of online sales. In high street retail sector, which had moved very little previously, uh, capital values began to fall uh, last year by 17%. Thus, prime yields increased by 40 basis points on average on high street retail and 70 basis points on shopping centers. And you, Arno, what did you observe on the lending side last year? Well, you can easily imagine, Stephanie, that the lending activity has not been immune to the curvy general turmoil. Indeed, as in the hospitality, the retail sector in the landing side had to cope with numerous waivers in order to provide debt service holidays and uh, to support the drop in clients' revenue. In addition, banks had granted a large number of PGEs, meaning state-granted loans. Under these conditions, you can understand that the bank's retail portfolio has suffered a sharp risk assessment and grade. And what trends have you observed, Stephanie, in the underlying retail market? Well, obviously, we have seen a collapse in tourist flows and massive recourse to working from home. And that has led to a sharp drop in tenant sales in main shopping streets of major European cities, minus 60%, for instance, in Champs-Élysées last year. For the same reasons, there has been a significant drop in footfall in shopping centres, minus 28% in France, minus 42% in the UK. Uh, but the difference is that there has been a very uh, rapid recovery during the reopening phases to around 85 to 90% of 2019 levels. Basically, people had to adapt. And there has been a surge in online retail market share of 300 basis points to 700 basis points, depending on the country but with very different penetration rates. For instance, it has reached a relatively high level in countries such as the UK, 26%, or even in Germany at 20%. While the growth potential is stronger in Spain or in Italy, where the market share of online sales remains below 10%. Now I understand. Now, what, what do we need to look at in 2021? Currently, the level of uncertainty remains high slow vaccination campaigns, still many restrictions in store and leisure opening in Europe. On the other hand, projections for, by the Centre for Retail Research anticipate a plateau in online sales market share this year, and we share this view, actually. Indeed, we believe that the need for social contact and shopping with friends or family will resume when the health situation has improved. We also believe that the concept of omnichannel shopping has been reinforced during the crisis, with greater use of click and collect and drive. However, going forward, it will be important to observe at what level uh, tenant sales and occupancy cost ratio will stabilize. We expect more retailer bankruptcies once government supports disappear. And in addition, retailers will give, an, will give um, even greater priority to the best locations uh, with best footfall. So uh, all in all, we expect rising vacancy rates and we would not be surprised to see decreases in rental values of 10 to 15% during lease renewals and relettings. Then Arno, how did you see uh, the COVID-19 crisis changing lenders appetite for retail. As you said earlier, Stephanie, the retail sector is currently suffering from specific adverse economic parameters, such as lockdown, curfew, and fierce email competition for shopping center or tourism scarcity for high street retail. A direct consequence of this crisis is the unusual negotiation between landlords and tenants regarding rental holidays 
and or long-term rent reduction, which could, of course, be a key issue for lenders. As we notice, some of these negative parameters could be considered as long-term patterns for the retail industry, e-commerce competition, for instance, while others are more related to the current sanitary situation. In each of these subsectors, the retail underlying activity is as well a key element to catch the mood of the lenders to finance or not this asset, this asset class. For instance, groceries, delicatessen or supermarket whose activities are obviously flagged as essential and whose local footprint is seen as essential for customers remain a bankable subsector compared to a clothing outlet, for instance, which is directly facing the e-commerce competition. From your side, Stephanie, where do you see some value now? Basically, it is difficult to determine a price on assets for which it's unclear how rents uh, will evolve. In this context, we expect investment volumes to be weaker again this year. Although H2 could be more active with the sale of portfolios by four sellers. Um, therefore, according to our models, uh, retail prime yield could increase by another 50 to 75 basis points in the main European cities recovered. On the other hand, we have started to identify some pockets of attractive values in shopping centers in some areas. First, in Italy, we expect a 30 basis point prime yield compression by the end of the crisis for shopping centers in the region of Milan. Uh, indeed, prime yields currently stand at 6.15%, which seems pretty attractive to us, given the penetration of online sales uh, remains at a very low level, 6%, and also given that the region of Milan is rather rich. Secondly, in Germany, we expect 20 basis points by the end of the crisis, yield compression, um, given a structurally stronger economy, a uh, rather mature online penetration in our view, and uh, investments supported by a structurally strong domestic market. And on your side, Arno, are lenders still ready to finance the retail sector? Of course they are, but with a sharper concern regarding the category of retail. Indeed, lenders will be eager to focus on retail assets being spared by the pandemic crisis and the e-commerce permanent sales like the retail park segment, for instance, as it's an open air retail concept, or which will recover soon after the end of the pandemic lockdowns, like high street retail, which benefit on the top of that from uh, a location in the art of city centers. Sure, you're right. Then what about financing conditions? Is there any change there? Indeed, the lenders are, because of this current crisis, more cautious about the financing conditions. We can notice the following general trends, for instance. First, a reduction of the lender's allocation to the retail class for the benefit of, alter of alternative asset classes such as logistics, residential or healthcare. Secondly, a more conservative approach regarding the terms and condition with a lower LTV with a 5 to 10% drop from 60% down to 50, 55% and higher margin in line indeed with the lender's credit risk surge, which could go up to 75 basis points, depending, of course, of the assets, the leverage and the sponsor. And maybe to finish with a flight to quality analysis with a more accurate attention to the location and the sponsor. Large institutional or rates will be favored over opportunistic funds, for instance.